Welcome back to the LCS, and as we get ready for our next series, you guys need to know, this is very important, next week, we are Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Friday! Thursday, Friday! So, today Woo! is Saturday. <laughs> next week, it's gonna be Thursday, Friday. Look at the screen. Really? Yes. Look down there, the in red. Thursday, Friday. And Thursday interestingly Friday. enough, those are the games that are on the Thursday and the Friday. Wow. Really? But if you don't watch on Thursday and Friday, you're going to miss it. That's awful. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll remember that. Thursday, Friday. I don't want to miss those games. All right, this is my job. Dig and toss <laughs> if you miss those games, we have a problem. Yeah. Dig and toss hundred these. You can see the players going through ready checks right now. We're going to be in the game shortly. But 100 Thieves was rather good last week, actually. Yeah. I know I did not predict them to win the game, but they definitely won it by a lot. And this is just like a fun graphic. Teams ranked by their maximum goal beat in week one. Dignitas really yeah. could be in they first place. Uh, that was the game one game they had against C9 before losing the next two. But both these teams did show some high highs in week one. Yeah, they did. So 100 Thieves in particular, the one we wanted to focus on is like, that was just a stomp as you had mentioned. Um, I loved it, how it showcased just the one game, but overall like, they really showcased that they had the consistency from the regular season. Because mm -hmm. the reason I had to hold that delay was because I was like, damn, the playoffs was their really big poor point. But during the regular season, that was when people were really surprised by their performance and how they were showing up on stage, nodding scrims, but at least they're starting out strong here. Yeah, and I think the big thing in those playoff performances is that they did try out compositions that didn't necessarily click as well as the things they had tried in regular season. True. And in the, the series against NRG, we saw them be super flexible again, especially around their solo lanes, and especially around Quid, right? Yes. We're talking about Quid. Yeah. Uh, we called out uh, his Aatrox mid from spring. Here we saw him bring out the Ezreal AD mid um, as another option. Then they flexed Talia into the jungle for River. And here is Jensen versus Quid in 2024. They have a lot of champion similarities, but Quid has played a lot different champions as well. Yeah, just different strengths here from what I've seen. People a lot of times look this as a negative when you see someone with like just a more focused champion pull, but that has just been Jensen. He's been a great control mage player. Um, and I, I personally think that that is where the meta is actually heading towards. We've already seen Azir played. Uh, Corky has been a real demon. So I think this is actually right down the wheelhouse of, of Jensen. But with Quid, I mean, that's been the problem with 100 Thieves. Drafting versus 100 Thieves is like, how, like yeah. what are they willing to play? They'll play anything. Yeah, mid jungle especially. River will pull mm -hmm. out some weird picks. He played Shaco last year. He played Zyra, the only player to play Zyra in week one that was super effective. I'm actually really surprised that Quid hasn't played Corky, yeah. just because that's just the most vanilla thing you can play in the mid lane. But him not going in that direction was surprising. I, what else do you think about this series, Raz? So I think it's going to be more of a, a point around the meta, um, only because. We've seen the Ezreal mid on first game. Second game was Tristana. And overall, I think that we're just seeing a lot more AD carries being played through the mid lane. I want to see if we've seen, like actually a point that you wanted to make was just like what we've seen globally around AD carries mid. You saw the Kai'Sa, right? Yeah, there was a Kai'Sa in LEC that went the kind of AP mm. hybrid build. Uh, but we also saw uh, uh, in, uh, it lost, but another <laughs> Ezreal mid. Uh, I think the big thing is that it opens up AP carries in yes. the jungle, which is, again, we talked about River flexing the Talia. We've seen Talia taken off the table in our first series because she is so flexible. I know, Raz, you pointed out at the top of the day, you were looking to see her flexed mid jungle, potentially even bot, which we did see in LCK. Uh, so we'll see if 100 Thieves are willing to be that flexible. Time for predictions. 100 Thieves versus Dig. Okay. Oh, okay. Bit of all a right. Dig believer here. They were good last week. Yeah? Yeah. You they need to have convince a lot of all veterans. of us and Discord. Apparently. So, one thing about today is nobody predicted 2 0 for any series. Yeah. yeah. Including Discord, which is pretty interesting. I just think that the strength of schedule mismatch makes the week one data really difficult to try and actually decipher. And I would say that Zven looked quite good as an AD carry. I think the team had generally strong macro throughout the game. And I do think that they're a steady team and I want to see that go up against the chaos and aggression of 100 Thieves. Completely, I would agree with that. I think from 100 Thieves, the 
Man, the drafting has been really yeah. a strong point for that team. A lot of credit to uh, both Spooks and Grayson Gilmer on that one, uh, Golden yeah. Glue. Um, th that team has been really smart in how they handle it. And on top of that, the players themselves really are bought in on the pace of play that they have as a squad. So a really fast paced team. Their team fights have been great. I want to see that consistency from them going further. But Dignitas is just an anomaly. I need to see more data on them. And we're about to. Thank That's you. That's a good thing. Emily also caught up with both coaches ahead of today's series. Hello, I am joined by Dignitas coach Mayberry and uh, 100 Thieves coach Golden Glue before their match. Mayberry, I'm going to start with you just because people might not know your kind of connections through TSM to some of this team. Uh, so how is the team just generally coming together and what is it like working with these guys? Um, it's really fun, but at the same time it's a lot of work. I mean, I've worked with Spika since TSM, I kind of know how he works. And we have a lot of uh, strong personalities who have a, like a lot of opinions about how to, how they want to play the game. So we've definitely been working on that and trying to get everyone on the same page in scrims. From week one to week two, because I know you guys had a little bit less practice together as a roster, uh, what improvements have been made in the week of scrims? Um, I would say our priority on like a lot of the early game objectives, getting on the same page about when we should be playing for like dra uh, Dragon or Grubs, and then like getting more into mid game scenarios as well and how we should be playing around waves. Okay. And then for you, Golden Glue, you guys kind of picked up right where you left off in terms of regular season, coming in, had an absolute dominating performance. So what did you work on in the off season to kind of keep that natural synergy that your team already had? Yeah, well, we went to Korea to boot camp for like a month. So we got a kind of a head start, I feel like, on the other teams. And we had a lot of stuff to work on, um, especially with like all the lane swaps that was happening. It's, they're not happening as much anymore, but we're kind of just working on honestly every aspect of the macro and the mid game. And it was really satisfying to see that all that work paid off in our first LCS match. So hopefully we continue with that today. Uh, one rumor previously about your team was that you're doing rough and scrims. One rumor about your team currently is that you're doing rough and scrims. So who is better in scrims right now? It can't get much worse than us. So. I, think, I think it's probably us, but yeah, historically we suck in scrims. Like my, we, we freaking suck in practice, but I do feel like, you know, we do learn a lot. And if anything, the losses, like we're making sure the enemy doesn't learn anything and we're learning everything. So it's like a, it's an upwards exponential trend for us. We're, we're definitely closing on making every possible mistake. <laughs> but, uh, if we get that all out, then we can only do the right plays, you know? So. Yeah. Loses improve, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. All right. Thank you so much. This is a fun time. Best of luck to you both in taking the stage today and hopefully bringing what you learned from scrims, but not necessarily scrim execution. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Emily. And we are getting ready for the second best of three of the day. And I get to be on the cast now. It's my voice. It's Kangas. And I got Jet and Kobe with me. Jet, this is our first time casting together. Were you aware? I am not aware of that. Yeah. But you've done it for everything. Man. I'm glad I could be here for you guys' first. Yeah. Yeah. How many times did you cast with Kobe? Only once, I believe. Usually put me with a Zale. Twice. And I think that that was, oh, well, okay. <laughs> I'm that, hurt. That looks bad on me now. <laughs> uh, but they, they, they uh, don't allow me and a Zale on the same screen anymore. Too much we'll blind the audience. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the lights are too bright, and uh, it's, it's a bad viewing experience. <laughs> but we got 100 Thieves versus Dignitas taking to the rift here. And Jed, I heard you talking during the lounge about how close this series is going to be. And I got to say, I feel like the, both these teams are actually very close in power level. When I look at their performance yeah. from week one, NRG did not put up that much of a fight, so 100 Thieves looked a little bit better, but Dignitas did put up a pretty massive fight. I'm expecting a close series. I also think it's going three games. I would hope that we get three games. I just like League of Legends, and I want to see us play more of it, so every you single day. You weren't satisfied with the first two that we saw today? <laughs> so, no, I wasn't, actually. Those were not close games. I was so excited to see this Immortals team that it slammed I Shopify, yeah. pop off, and now I'm excited to see this 100 Thieves team that slammed in their 2-0 last week against Energy, and then this Dig team that even though they're on a two-game losing streak, mm -hmm. had a very positive first impression, and also just the overall importance of who wins this series. Like if Dignitas doesn't close this out, and they start 0-2, they only have, a lot of people don't realize this, 
five more matches, Ooh. right? So it's a huge percentage of their standings is dictated by yeah. each individual yeah. match. That's the thing with best of threes. It's it's incredibly important here. Everyone carries so much weight because also your playoff seeding means a lot mm -hmm. uh, this time Could around. Be the entire best of five difference yeah. in the gauntlet run. And actually, Dignitas, they, if it was just best of ones, they would be so happy because their yeah. first game, yep. The first game against Cloud9 was great. People would be saying, oh my God, Sven is back. He's a god, he's king. You know, they, they trashed on Berserker. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately for Dignitas, it was a full best yeah, of three. I know. Uh, and Cloud9 is able to come back. So now they get another chance at it. Personally here, I'm super excited for, especially the top lane matchup, mm -hmm. because this is a return of Licorice to the league yeah. against Sniper. Sniper never got to play against Licorice um, because of the you know explosion of Golden Guardians and, and Licorice missing out in spring, and so Sniper got to have this amazing you know rookie split in spring, but he never got to actually fight Licorice, who was one of the best, if not the best, uh, performing top laner before leaving. Sniper pulled Licorice out of retirement, confirmed. Yeah, right? he saw he saw what Sniper <laughs> well, did. To everybody else was like, like, I gotta come back, man. So I'm coming back. I know we gotta teach him a lesson. Potentially, he did both because if we remember why Licorice wasn't on a team. There was the contraction of the LCS and also teams wanted to give new players like Sniper a chance. So did, in some ways, Sniper oh. pushed him into and pulled him out of the same retirement. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. We've got even like a symbiotic relationship. Oh, yeah. Let's Sniper get... sweating is what I'm hearing here. They, uh, they finally uh, uh, fixed up the lobby though. So let's get right into draft. Skarner will be Remaining on the ban list, as is appropriate, I believe, uh, and it makes it more Finger exciting. Finger looking good. <laughs> yeah, so our uh, our top lane matchup that we're looking forward to won't be uh, kind of ruined there by having Skarner in it. And one thing I'm noting is Hunter Thieves definitely have different draft prep to Cloud9, because in oh, yeah. the series, Cloud9 was banning bot laners all three for the first rotation. They were heavily prioritizing Zven. Hunter Thieves leaving a couple more options open for him. Maybe they're not as concerned. I don't know what the scrims are looking like behind the scenes, but either way, they're prioritizing the Senna comp. And Senna makes so much sense for 100 Thieves specifically. They're a team that plays so heavily through their solo lanes. So having Senna as a safe, strong laning, but more supportive type of carry makes perfect sense for them. It's one of the reasons they prioritize it. And this even actually started for me back at MSI, uh, watching a lot of the teams incorporating Senna and building team comps around this champion. The really the most successful ones to me that are the ones that paired Senna with other super long range damage. You know, we saw like the Senna Karthus early today and how much damage and pressure that can put on enemy carries that don't have shields or sustain for them. If you get hit by a Senna ultimate and an Ornn ultimate and a Karthus ultimate, you're out of the yeah. game already from multiple screens away. So uh, we'll see as 100 Thieves are playing around with it. River has been one of yeah. the uh, more fun ones, but there, there it is. is. Exactly as yep. mentioned, we're going to get it again. The Senna and the Karthus, this long range artillery uh, composition here. I think that maybe 100 Thieves had a series of scrims against Cloud9 this week, especially if they ended up locking in the Yone right here. Uh, Senna Karthus Yone, exactly what yeah. C9 had in game so, one. I've got a Yone stat for you because LCK, and uh, you know, obviously everybody wants to be, um, you know, like Gen G and, and wants to be, uh, you know, one of the best teams in the world there with Chovy piloting the Yone. Yeah. Um, but Yone has lost every single other game. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I so. Wow, Yone's, Cloud9 is so good. Yone's, yeah, wow. Yeah, Cloud9. Wow. Cloud9's able to make it work, you know? JoJo's won 100 LCS. Jo JoJo's oh, like, Jo I'm, I'm, like Pika. Jo I'm like Chovy, so uh, yeah. This oh. is a big deal, because this is what 100 Thieves were playing last week that everyone was so excited about. Their draft was so unique, the Ezreal mid, the Zyra jungle, and yes, the combo, we just saw this work for Cloud9, but you're into a Zyra, which also is able to just turbo clear through the jungle really fast. I believe Spika mentioned on Pros last week that he has a 40% solo Q win rate on jungle Zyra, but that's because okay. that's the curve of learning, right? Ah, he started yeah. low, but he's clearly He started below enough. 40%. He started zero. Yeah, really. <laughs> if you lose the first <laughs> game, that's how it works. Yeah, if you lost the first one. <laughs> and it's all it's been all uphill from there, baby. Absolutely. Uh, so we'll see about Spika's mastery curve with, uh, yeah. with Zyra here, but this uh, this is the speed clear jungle, so this is going to be a fun one. We've been talking a lot about matching these uh, turbo farming AP jungles against each other. 
Also, I gotta say, yes, the Senna Karthus have that range. Yone has the combo with it. But Yone, kind of scary to go into that Zyra range because if you're getting slowed by the Rylai's, all the plants just doing all that damage to you. Yes, the other two will help with that, but 100 Thieves, now their mid laner, specifically Quid, is gonna be you know, thinking this is a bit of a headache of a champion to deal with. You also got Leona locking you down in there too. So I like the pick overall, but I do wonder how it interacts with the card this in particular. For sure, and we're gonna dive in deep to the jungle matchups right at the start of the game because there's a lot of stuff I wanna talk about. The last set of bans though, with the Ornn and the Tom Kench and Nautilus already being banned, those are all the most popular pairs with Senna. So 100 Thieves is gonna have to go in a bit of a different direction. And then 100 Thieves with the two top lane bans are probably hoping to prevent Licorice from having a good, like, blind pick option, but he ends up going with the Cassante. Yeah. And now actually as the blue side team, Sniper gets the counter pick. This is following the trend from last summer. I mean, we talked about this at the top of the day. Licorice is constantly blind picking. Seems like the specialty for him as a player. And now the answer from Sniper is that Camille. Although I guess technically we could maybe see that Camille going to the bot lane. Less expected though, probably in the top. We'll see. Oh, it's, it's yeah, it's for sure. Yeah. Match up into Cassante. Oh, never mind. I no. Well, no, it, so it, it could is. be either one. It could be, but it's surely it's set a scion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, the one where you put the you put the root onto the minion and then you scion shout yeah, the, yeah. the minion that has the root onto uh -huh. them. We've all been D2 there. You pulled it's, it off like yeah, two that, years ago. That's one of those super fun bot lane Ooh. duos to play, uh, where you get to actually make use of the creative, like theoretical uh, synergies between the champs and Sion's ability to move those minions. And we could also be getting some sneaky lane swapping now that Sion's in the game as well, though. If they really wanted to do something strange in this game with the Karthus being able to fast clear and push people out of the jungle, this was a this was a great draft. The most exciting thing to me about it is just the fact that we have not seemed to shift towards the Sejuani Maokai every game, and we actually have two teams that are willing to play the high damage, fast clearing AP junglers. I'm super excited uh, for this one. I mean, adding the Camille onto this, you have so much, we already mentioned like the, the artillery aspect of the early picks of Senna and Karthus, but 100 Thieves have amazing split push here in Camille and in Yone, these melee solo laners that can dive right into the middle of it. Such a, a flexible look here. I really like how Analyst is kind of setting it up too, as 100 Thieves have been one of the really creative teams that we have had in the LCS. Uh, big props to that coaching staff that did win coaching staff of the split. And they've got uh, matching jackets up there now, Ooh, too. I like that the, uh, synergy. So I like the synergy. style. Does it count as matching t-shirts? They're not exactly yeah, the same. They, they are, Both but they're ups. way less impressive yeah. than the clean jackets. I agree. <laughs> That's a good point. Well, 100 of these versus Dignitas ready to take to the stage here. I want to highlight, you said the split push, and I hope they lean into that because that's two more melee characters locked into that Zyra. If you're walking into all those plants, again, that is where Zyra is the strongest. She wants you to come into her. She doesn't want to have to be the one engaging onto you. Yeah, and it totally makes sense because when you have this uh, you know, global Karthus ultimate and global Senna ultimate, you can enable your split pushers, Quid and Sniper, who are two of the most mechanically gifted players in the whole league, to do 2v1 outplays. And you don't even have to go over to them because you can just press your R button and, uh, and help them out if you do get to that fed split push you know kind of dream scenario there for 100 thieves later on but let's see how the early game goes because this is going to be a fun one with our uh, zyra matching up against the karthus really going to put the speed clear to the test game one in and uh okay i'm seeing something about me on there okay yeah, sweet chad. <laughs> awesome thanks everybody appreciate the support but Jad, this is your moment because you said you wanted to talk about the jungle matchup early on in the game now's your window thank you, you it can looks see like kangas's moment actually <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. <laughs> Kangas, Poggers, this is going to keep going. No, no, right at the end. You cursed me. If they the don't actually disrupt the early jungle clears, I was tracking River last game, and he did a full clear 2 minute 58 second Zyra, but he also knows that Zyra wants to stand around the jungle camp for the plants to spawn for faster first clear, which is why this delayed invade will actually slow down speed yeah. as well as push him back. Yeah, exactly. You want to disrupt seeds. It's... It's not really as intuitive as like Shaco and everyone thinks, oh yeah, yeah. we always got to invade Shaco and pop the boxes. Yeah. But you really want to uh, pop those seeds or at the very least get suboptimal seeds. And we're seeing it again, the Senna here. Yeah. They're like, oh, uh, Berserker was pretty annoying there, uh, you know, with the early Senna going through mid. And it's just going to pass on up to that lane swap on the top side. Uh, I mean, such, such good use of the Scion early on to go Still for here. the invade. And Meech is also being a terror right now. If you have such strong mid prio, it would open up the window for River to try and invade later in the clear. But Speak is, ah, oh, slowed down that Raptor a little bit. 
delays Ooh. him, but I don't think it's going to matter. 40% uh, win rate, Soliki, you said? <laughs> <laughs> I think that, oh, so no. I think that's what Spika said. Ah, okay, okay. And I hope I didn't Ooh. just make a lot. <laughs> just, just checking. Regardless, we are going to get what I was talking about, where Meech does go all the way up to the top lane. Yeah. Because as Senna, you can lane with anyone. Mm -hmm. um, melee and, and uh, whichever melee it is doesn't really matter here. So he comes up to Sniper on the big, slow-pushing wave to crash on Licorice here. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about this is the first time we're going to see Sniper versus Licorice while Sniper's got some backup. Also, Meech, who uh, has yet to play in the league at the same time that Licorice has, as he's looking to get out of Sven's lane early on here. Yeah, Licorice had such a strong reputation that Sniper was like, all right, I'm going to have to bring some yep. backup mm -hmm. for this. <laughs> it's funny that Meech is actually visiting all of their solo laners this early on because you expect Senna to help out split pushers later in the game with yeah. the R button, but he's actually winning lane for... <laughs> or. The, the top lane was already already winning, but he won mid lane, helped out quite a lot here with the, uh, you know, passing through mid, and then also helping out on top side here with the crash, forcing Isles uh, to come and match with Licorice. But yeah. it's still so much more annoying because the Leona is not going to be able to provide as much support here as the the range harassment that Meech is providing. I agree, and 100 Thieves, what they've done in this game is they've just created such a unique situation. Because I imagine in a lot of the jungle games that Spika has played, even if he gets invaded, it's not like when he goes top lane, there's two people there. The Scion is a big part of this as well, if he doesn't get punished, Speaking because of, Spika's moved around the back. Yeah, nice flash from Ayla, gets out of danger. But that, that was a good angle from Spika to look for that. He knows that there's no counter jungling to be had, so get a free summoner. Now top lane, though, River is around as well. Isles and Licorice are going to try and survive under this turret. I don't imagine they go for a dive. I feel like that would be really risky. Yeah, but even just the extra damage and harassment as as two tanks under tower mm. at top side. You're yep. like, you know, Isles is here. He's here for like support for uh -huh. you, but it's like it's not really it's not helping as much uh, as all of the extra range damage that 100 Thieves are, are applying up there and, and really trying to pressure him at the CS under tower. And you can see the CS gap growing on the top side. Our dream of a split push Camille with having double globals on her team to help her out is very much alive and well. But I want to ask you the question, do we favor it? Because the same lead is their bot side. Zven is now getting basically a free laning phase as a smolder, able to stack up there, and is equivalent CS lead basically to Sniper over Licorice right now, as there is actually a dive going here. No, they got a full wave. Who's going to tank turret first? Sniper takes the first one. And then they call it off. Meech in a compromised position at this point. Speaker's walking forward. Gonna have to flash. And now just damage back onto Licorice who gets under the turret. A little interesting maneuver there from 100 Thieves. Feel like they wanted the dive, but weren't sure how to pull it off. Yeah, trying to get a little bit of damage in there, but also still looking at tower plates as like the guaranteed much mm. easier. Uh, Cassante uh, is able to go unstoppable there, get right back under tower, even as Spika was kind of hovering over. But yeah, I mean, the, the game plan and uh, is cruising along, except for Ayla has no flash. No flash, yeah. I think this is going to be a dead sign on your screen, everybody. Zven, Ooh. one more auto, yeah. not quite. Ignite, and the auto goes to Zven. First blood picked up by Smolder. And that's actually a big consequence of what 100 Thieves has done here. I'd say mainly a misplay by Ayla, but when you're up against a Smolder, giving him the free lane, that was the consequence of all the annoyance that Meech was doing up in top lane or even around mid lane. So you really don't want to also give him gold because he's going to be a little accelerated on stacks. He had no one really stopping him from either just pressing buttons on Scion for stacks or last hitting for free. He's already up at 40 now, so he's AOE last hitting as well. The BF sword being completed and hitting level six. Zven's off to the races. Zven is indeed. Let's see. Uh, see if we can keep it up here. Good stacks. Good money. Meet in the Just mid lane here. The wave. Yeah. Going to be able to keep it no problem. Quid teleports back. Quid will be able to collect all of the extra minions. Might stop the back here as well. That's really nice because now you can get another wave shoved in. Jensen doesn't have teleport. We're onto the grubs. Licorice is hovering around, but just does not have the numbers advantage. Needs to be careful here. It looks like these belong to 100 Thieves. Absolutely. I'd say Rivers currently the one with the upper hand in the AP Jungle War. Yeah. He not only did the early invade, but he kept the tempo throughout the rest of the early game. He got basically a seven camp early clear, as well as the harass. Hits level six first, also takes Grub, so he's got a good start to cart this year. And you compare that to how River looked on the Zyra last weekend. We were so impressed with how fast the Zyra was able yeah. to clear and get all the objectives. It was like the dragons, it was the Grubs, it was all the scuttles, and it does not seem like Speak is able to match that. 
All right. At least though his buy was okay on the Zyra. Like it, he wasn't sure, sure. he wasn't like poor or anything. He like a little bit behind, so he was still able to get his faded ashes yeah. and the boots for the move speed, which are the key components here to the speed clear. Uh, so now he's been able to catch up to level six, but mid lane is is still so annoying. I feel like Meech here yeah. uh, in, in his travels between top and mid. Uh, has has actually applied so much pressure and helped a lot, even though with the first blood that you guys keep on mentioning for this this problem of of Zven, this problem of the smolder yeah. that's not on screen a lot. That'll be later. That, yeah. Don't worry that, about that. That is later. Let's set a timer and for it, 20 minutes. It also, it also means that Dignitas, not only do they have the dragon, but they also have the gold lead uh, yeah. here. So as much as we're hyping up the annoyance factor of the Senna and the later stages where you can have these, uh, you know, melee solo laners split pushing and applying all this pressure. Um, the uh, the unseen smolder is quite deadly. Ooh, sniper could be in some trouble here. All out used early, locked in place, taken down. Licorice picking up that kill. That's two on the board for Dignitas. Is action bot side as well. Then trying to get some damage in onto Ayla, who's turned attention onto Isles, the tank. And it's just getting shredded by Sven. Still early game, but you are taking damage. That's Dragon's doing a lot of damage. Oh, Sven's Sven's flashing away. Has the cleanse still. Sven oh. gets it! Wants to kill on a Meech and is rewarded. And this is the weird thing about lane swaps. We ended up seeing this a lot at MSI with Senna. You get such a level mismatch between the solo laner and the roaming support. But then when you're actually taking a 2v2 like this, like a Bomby Cinder versus a BF Sword as the two carries, it's not even going to be close. So yeah. Hunter Thieves, again, not having the right wave position or really just Zven and Isles playing that correctly. Zven has just been masterfully playing this 1v1 bot lane to now have an Essence Reaver completed before nine minutes. Yeah. Ayla and Meech opted for that too. In uh, saying stuff here from Zven. He is truly the king of the bottom lane um, at the moment. And you already mentioned it, but like putting on, putting a dent into the Leona while you've got the extra resistances there yeah. really serve them no purpose. And Zven is going to be free to run them down, uh, easily able to flash for the extra kill here. And continues with oh. the stacks, by the way. Back to live flash away from Jensen. Quid went in there looking for some damage and a kill. Now the Karthus ultimate coming down. Requiem will be enough. Still a little too early. Just a Dark Harvest proc. Not gonna be a terrible outcome for River. Getting early Dark Harvest procs is very important for the Karthus, but it's really just Meech still moving around, but it's Dignitas who's coming ahead, even though there's been all this tomfoolery by Hunter Thieves. And let's be honest, when you say Dignitas are ahead, it, you mean Sven. <laughs> Sven is Dignitas. <laughs> he, yeah. he literally like is the entire team right now. Uh, massive stuff here for Smolder. Mm -hmm. To be fair, we should also give the props to Licorice. I like spreading, yeah. uh, spreading around because mm. he was under a lot of the extra pressure with the Karthus annoying factor with, uh, you know, the Senna roaming up there. And Licorice did a good job of scraping together those CS, did not drop super far yeah. behind. Which also brings us to Licorice and Sniper, because Sniper, this is his first year in the LCS. Licorice has many years in the LCS, so comparing their overall games they've played in the career, it's not even close. Like, wow. Licorice has way more experience than Sniper. However, there is the rust factor. Mm. So if we were to just look at 2024, it would end up being uh, a little bit different. The 28 will stay, <laughs> and three. Who, who's the okay, rookie yeah. now? Yeah. And in the midst of the four. He also so lost who's most of his hair. Really. Yeah, that's the biggest uh, nerf right there. Dignitas onto the grubs yet again. This time they're trying to deny the six stack from 100 Thieves. We got the first three. River is Dianold. Looking for the fight. Here comes Ben, though. Watch out for the dragon. Taking a lot of damage here already. Isles goes down. Ayla tanking up a lot. Flashes of safety. Licorice in trouble on the side. 1v1 needs Sniper, but now Meech can turn his attention over there. 100 Thieves, they absorbed Dignitas' attempt and just pushed them off of the grub. Sniper's going to keep going for this. Gets the kill on the Licorice. Huge play from the Thieves. Yeah, really nice uh, trap there from the Thieves. If they have the Scion ult coming up the river, so nice to have Ayla, like, section off the entire rest of the Dignitas team, allowing 100 Thieves to grab the extra couple of kills there. And Dignitas with just one grub, I mean, at least you you already denied this full six, but 100 Thieves here with five, with a bunch of turret plate money, now they start to make their Speed real dive. ascent. This could be a dive. Licorice rooted up. Ah, oh, they're not going to go for it. Yeah, All right. he, he's so tanky, and I, I think we're going to get to see this one more time. This is where the level advantage that actually granted Sven the kill in the bottom lane 
was big because Ayla could ult in as a big level Scion. Oh, Meech. Trying to get back to that cleanse used, but it will not save Meech's life. Actually, <laughs> maybe I spoke oh. too soon. He's running away. Slowed up by Licorice, ghosting forward. One more Q. Side step. Oh. Meech. Oh. oh, survives long enough for Licorice to take a couple turret shots, but that teleport was not fast enough from Sniper. Wait, if he keeps walking and doesn't go for that auto at the very end there by tower, does he... Does he get? Does he live? Man, the juice. No. Up was no. too fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Ghost was stunned. ghosted. Yeah, yeah. Ghost um, It was really good juke uh, up until that, uh, you know, very last moment there. Though, really nice stuff uh, to at least make it interesting and survive for a while. Meanwhile, Dragon picked up on the other side of the map because of the investment there on top side. Yeah, it's gonna be one to one. This we're in for a banger first game. So hopefully yep. it continues to be a banger series. We still wonder about Sven 136 at just 13 minutes in terms of his smolder stacks. He's going to be getting that execute mm -hmm. at a really early portion. But the coordination of Hunter Thieves is what we need to be watching for in the mid game because last split when they dominated the regular season, so much of it was from game states like this where they weren't necessarily blowing people out. But any time a team fight would happen, they would just explode the game. And also they had good target selection. Oh, oh speaking of okay. sniper. Just solo kills Licorice. Welcome back to the league, baby. We missed you. The classic Trinity Force is done. Guess what? Camille's Q is now a Cho'Gath ultimate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chops his head off with the leg blades. Puts him in the dirt. Oh, Sniper trying to send him back into retirement oh, early here as he no. dodges out on the Zyra ult and gets another solo kill. <laughs> Even lives it. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> more uh, fighting, more the fighting mid lane. Over the top, though, in the mid lane, Jensen Almost goes down, quid, not quite enough damage. So Sniper was already the top lane solo kill king. He didn't get a chance to go at Licorice or speak a last split because so, they were both down. He gets them both within two minutes. Can I introduce uh, some like point multipliers for solo kills? If you do two <laughs> V1s. Uh, under their turret. Yeah, if you do two V1s, yeah. you like you get a like 2.5 multiplier. Yeah, yeah. And then under a turret, if you're diving them also, it's like another multiplier. <laughs> yeah, all the multipliers. Because we've had a couple solo kills this year where it's like a failed dive and two people die. Yeah, that was yeah, literally yeah. last game with that. You get like a yeah. negative multiplier. On the stat sheets, it's going to be two solo kills, but yeah. a solo kill isn't a solo kill. And the explanation is right in front of us. Uh, let's get another look at that. So Licorice just walks up to the wave. I think he's just disrespecting that Sniper had that Trinity Force. Yeah. And then Licorice, yeah, I mean, he goes for it because Spika's, like, walking behind him. Um, but w as he goes all out, just gets chopped down immediately on the Q. And s Sniper sees the second one. Ooh. Really good yeah. timing on his ultimate to avoid the knockup from the Zyra ultimate. And then he flashes out the tower shot. That land barely land. enough to burn him down. But it doesn't matter because you already got your multipliers. <laughs> True. Yeah, you got got place. Place. But you know what? Importantly, he's taken down two of the returning members. He has not taken down Zven yet. Zven, you got to watch out. I think you're on Sniper's <laughs> okay, list here because okay. that Camille will be looking at the Smolder going forward. Still in the 1v1 right now, though. I mean, River would be here to help. They're bringing Sion as well. If they crash this wave, I think they're definitely looking to dive him. No teleport, no ghost on Licorice. He's got one completed item. Still scary to dive a Cassante. He's gonna take it. I first. mean, tower's gonna be. Ooh, all out. Licorice just jumps to safety. Turret's already down, and it good. looks like he's out of there. But yeah. loses the objective. Yeah, exactly. He's good. The tower is going down regardless. They do. They do mm. get this one. Um, Licorice at least escaping with his life though. Trying to make the best out of a dangerous situation here. Dignitas. They are praying to Sven at this moment. Please, Sven, scale and carry Ooh. us. Oh. Uh, I don't think Svensson's oh! going to be the one to uh, scale here as he will unfortunately be on the receiving end of the Yone plus Karthus combo. Quid doing the work, River getting the credit. Either way, the one to punch too much. What a beautiful bit of teamwork there. It almost looked like, Quid, why did you exit early? I feel like you could have stuck around for the execute and River was just waiting there. They get more total gold because the assist and kill gold gets shared there and River picks up a kill with his ult. This is why we were hyping up the split push of the double melee solo laners yeah. so early on, just when we first see the composition. And now is the first point in the game where you get to see it in action. And it is devastating for these low health carries on the side of Dignitas. Sion gonna go in, Sion gonna pop right back out of Shelly, and the tower goes down for it. And this is where the game gets really difficult for Dignitas because they're already scared of both of their side lanes. And then I was gonna say, it's just hard to break through the smolder, but with the use of the Rift Herald, they crack that tier one mid, which is just gonna push everyone even further back 
and make it really difficult for Dignitas to approach and have good entries into the subsequent Dragons with 50 seconds on the next mountain. Yeah, it should be pretty easy for 100 Thieves to continually keep up their side lane pressure. That way you keep growing your gold lead as the game advances. It allows your Karthus to speed clear and then just pick up all the objectives for you, amass this giant, giant power difference. And then by the time you do get up to the point where you have to go through the enemy team, you have such a big advantage that you can, you hopefully can kind of uh, steamroll them. But we'll see it right now as uh, they've got the Camille on top side splitting. The bottom side's outer turret is still barely standing. So that should be the next objective. It has under, you know, about 30% HP left on that one here. So maybe Dignitas can try and get some comeback efforts and uh, you know, like sometimes you can use dangling objectives like that as bait. It doesn't look like they are currently, although Jensen is doing his best to keep those minions off. Yeah, I'm looking at the Dragon Timer as well because it has now spawned and 100 Thieves are on it first. Zven's got double items as the Dragon, 201 stacks getting close to critical mass. But there's so many threats on the enemy yep. team that that's not necessarily a guarantee you're going to win the team fight. So I actually don't mind that Dignitas is giving this up. Maybe a little unlucky. They would have liked to keep those stacking, but 100 Thieves are kind of scary right now. Completely agree, especially with Teleport being up on Sniper. Any type of approach can easily get locked down. Uh, like, just Camille ulting someone while Senna and Karthus ult are coming in over the top is going to be able to kill pretty much anyone, especially at this stage in the game before Sven can have any defensive items on his smolder. We'll see how quickly the Smolder is able to continue stacking to 18. We are close as 100 Thieves are actually starting to hit the tier two turrets with five grubs picked up earlier in the game. They do have very strong sieging power, but they don't want to commit to it just yet. Happy to just get, get some wards in the enemy jungle. Their pick potential with things specifically like the Yone ultimate, like the Camille. If they find somebody out of position, they can blow them up fast. But so far, Dignitas have been playing a fairly patient game. They haven't been giving them those opportunities to just pick them in their own jungle. Yeah, it's kind of rough for them because they're your number one goal is to first keep up your defensive vision through your jungle because those are the areas that Hunter Thieves are going to try and overtake to really increase their gold lead. Uh, you know, after all the outer towers are, are down, your next step in league is always move up your vision in the enemy jungle. So you can start taking away these buffs, taking away these camps. We're almost to the 20 minute mark, so the buffs are team wide and uh, really worth that extra little bit of taking away. And so Dig. Your goal in trying to combat that is like, all right, we keep up our defensive vision and we surprise. Yeah. <laughs> we try and yeah. get our surprise attack while while the enemy team gets greedy and wants to take the whole map and mm -hmm. increase their lead so much, you know, we have to try and overload somewhere that is hidden by vision and then make some surprise attacks here to, to blow the game back open. And if they get a 5v5 now that Sven is at 235 stacks before 20 minutes, mm -hmm. it would Ooh. be a little bit of a power spike at the moment. Two full items for him as well. Uh, Zven is, he, he's the hope. Like, the more yeah. Dignitas can actually try and create 5v5s or 5v4s, the better. But their windows are going to be so tight. You saw they got to, like, very briefly push the mid lane. But now, already, Sniper threatening Tier 2. Jensen has to respond, doesn't have Teleport. Licorice recalling because he doesn't see people on the map. Dignitas just can't actually set up for 5v5s. All right, and the question here is, how many stacks does Smolder need to survive a Camille ult on him with a <laughs> Karthus ult and a Senna ult. Ooh. And it's a bit of a trick question. Yeah, because those are stacks don't things. help you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the problem is, if that happens to you, you die. <laughs> How many pairs of sunglasses do you need to buy to lose 30 pounds? <laughs> yeah. uh, I will say, they do have other damage threats. So if everything is used on Zven, I know he's the most fed member. Yeah. But there is still a world where Speak and Jensen are able to facilitate the damage necessary while everything's blown on Zven. But it's not a fun position for Sven to be in, because you know that you have that target on your back. He certainly does. At least he's got his flash right now. Yeah. Um, so, outplay potential. Vika walking into his own jungle, has to flash away. Now, how caught out of position on 100 Thieves members? It does not look like there's any collapse happening here. Licorice had TP, but there's a very deep ward he could have looked for. Not going to be one that he wants. Okay, CG continues with Sniper roam. all out. Sven damage. Sniper's in trouble. Dodges that a lot of it, but Licorice will fall one for one trade. That's that exact 1v2 late game split push we were talking about mm. with the Karth Assault coming through. He's up at tower pushing, applying the pressure and goes one for one when they send multiple people down there, allowing, look at the rest of the map, by the way, the rest of your team oh. to get even more off it. Even though you don't get the kill on Jensen, wow. your team 
is able to take over full vision coverage of the Baron. They got the Scuttlecrab vision right in front of it. Karthus continued farming up, is over two items himself, plus the extra stacks on the Dark Seal. So um, has been at least here getting the outer tower gold, putting some more money in the pockets of the Dignitas Hope. Yeah, even that last uh, solo kill attempt from Quid on a Jensen, the Karthus ult is what got him low in the first place. And then if Jensen doesn't sidestep that Q, it actually would have been a Karthus ult contributing to both side lane solo kills. So <laughs> yeah. the plan Might is working assist, incredible yeah. for them. Do you think Sven, after that RFC, will go a defensive item? Because it's, it's, he's in this weird position where everything is on fire. And he's so strong. Like, the, the number of games where you're this strong on Smolder on stage, I, like, I haven't seen someone with this many stacks this early, I think, ever in LCS, let alone being 3-0. But then the rest of his team is so far behind, yeah. so you almost need to build damage to hope to carry. You could consider a... Um, oh, they want to We'll have to get back in the fight. itemization, because we're set up at the Baron right now. This is where Spico on the Zyra has a lot of power. If you can make them walk into you, but... They're just taking damage from the Baron. It's very early to start this. They're being split pushed right it. now, too. So going halfway yeah, yeah, yeah. does nothing here. They're being commit. split pushed by the Camille. Ayla's just being a nuisance right now. Meech and River trying to get damage in there. Licorice tanking it up right Comes now. Camille. Ayla goes for the big engage. Quinn over the side as well. Massive combo. Zyro will use very defensively, but it's not going to be enough. They're in the pit still. Licorice will win his fight on the Look side. The, the rest of Dignitas far and apart. Baron <laughs> doing massive damage. And 100 Thieves walking away. It's pretty even so far, but Licorice oh. with the double kill around the side. They lost track Wait. of him. Sniper goes Wait. down. Quinn was on the Baron trying to finish it instead of killing. Sven, like they, they they lost complete focus on on the dragon. They they lost complete focus on the smolder. They tried to go for the bear in there in the back. Let's take a look at this yeah, replay because I, this ooh. is gonna be a comical one. I got lost. I was looking at Sven and seeing how none of his executes were actually getting low enough to execute. It looked like everyone was incredibly low. Oh my. It, it should have been, I thought, a disastrous start for Dignitas because by the time the fight starts, which is this ultimate, they're yeah. already all at about 50% health. Spica goes down right away so there's no smite but river gets just popped over the wall and can't smite so now no one is secure about taking the baron so yes kobe quit in the middle probably should have gone on zven instead of messing around well, with this thousand health baron but he's so low anyway he takes one step towards Sven. Sven auto attacks him he dies yeah yeah i saw yeah the the way he got in there his soul inbound was at the back of the baron pit oh, oh, so okay he, back to live okay yeah <laughs> So it wasn't as comical <laughs> as I thought the setup was going to be, uh, but still ended up being extremely active here. We get right back to our normal game plan, though, of, yep. of split pushing. And also going for the Dragons now for Dignitas. It feels like they're starting to sweat, realizing our composition needs to go for the objectives. We are losing the side lanes. Stop fighting them there. We need to group up and try and get these uh, neutrals, but they also get just pushed out of here. So it feels like they're just losing everywhere on the map. Dignitas, despite how strong Sven is, they are still struggling. Now they make the play onto the side lane. Quid's in trouble. Lockdown should fall down as Sven has a lot of damage. Johnny Shadow will keep Quid alive for a little bit longer. All out into Sven wow. does not have enough damage. I mean, the shutdown going into Sven also, yeah. like this is a really fed smolder as the entire rest of the game and the entire rest of the map is still going to 100 Thieves, mm -hmm. uh, Zven continues to get richer and richer and richer. It's almost impossible that a Smolder can be this fed while his team <laughs> well, is 5,000 gold down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I'll think I've it. ever seen something this disparate. And they're trying to rush it. They're going to burn down the Baron while they're getting okay. split pushed again. Sven's got to do that DPS. Has purchased the Seeker's Arm Guards. We've got to keep that in mind. The stasis hey, Zyra is available. Zyra the pit for more speed. Zyra, or Ayla just flashing in and there. And Licorice won! Licorice push won him off. Licorice wins two. the side lane oh. against Sniper. That's huge for the side of Dignitas. He can now teleport back in. Meechan River trying to get that damage. That is Baron secure. Now Isles goes to the engage onto River. That should be a dead Karthus on our screen. The execute oh. damage is there. It's actually Spika that picks it up. Dignitas, they finally get the Baron. Dude, Licorice won the split push over yeah. there versus Sniper and then teleports into the rest of the team. Sven and Dignitas get the Baron and they got the extra kill. They got those crafty old tricks with yep. tons of experience. It's not like Licorice has ever been down in gold early game. Yeah. He farmed up. I think he had two and a half items. He, I need to see how he actually outplayed Sniper there. But then... The fact that Sven was so strong gave them a lot of Baron damage. They just, they really just turned the game around, I think, in this moment. They were 5,000 gold down. They get the solo kill and the shutdowns, as well as the Baron. How does Licorice pull this off? Does Sniper over, Sniper over the turret, maybe? He 
Yeah, I mean, so your your Q is on the turret, and so there was an early lead there for yeah. Licorice, but this is the moment where oh. he just yeah, he just dodged the stun right there really nicely, and Sniper goes down. But uh, yeah, getting the early start there while Sniper's trying to force down the turret, another pick off on the split. That's huge. Dignitas is starting to get the side lane split pushers that were giving them so much trouble early in the game. That. I mean, just the fact that they've gotten all these shutdowns is shocking. I didn't get yeah. to see the actual setup, oh. but now you can see. And this is with the defensive item. So I actually really love the Seekers from Sven because he yeah. finally had enough bonus gold to have enough damage while then being able to build defensive. A lot of this is going to come down to what they can get done with this Baron and then if they can stop that Mountain Soul. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fully on Team Dig now. With, with how fed Sven is, getting the luxury defensive items, the, the, the Seekers being able to stop one of the big all-ins, the attempts there from 100 Thieves on his life, this, this guy is massive. Dignitas just need to pivot around him. And you can see, both Speak and Isles will be attached to Sven at the hip, making sure that the peel is there if 100 Thieves tried to go at him. And Sven would for sure outplay with both a Leona and a Zyra there and a Seeker's Arm Guard and a Flash. It is... It is going to be Dignitas here keeping up the pressure. They got the split on top side with Jensen, uh, Jensen's Corky finishing that outer tower. They got the mid outer tower or secondary tower already. And they're looking for the secondary tower on bottom side here too. A lot of value from that Red Bull Baron buff. And they're able to continue the siege. Dragon's going to be up in two minutes. Dignitas, they might even look to end the game before that happens. They get the engage under the turret on the river. Barely alive for right now, but he will go down. That's Ignite for the kill on the side, though. Sniper's looking at Jensen, trying to get the flank. Buy some time, buy some space, as Quid cannot find the execute damage on anybody. And Sven is so good with the sidesteps there. He dodged everything yep. that Quid threw at him there and nearly killed him with the Q follow after he snapped back. Flash is also both up for both yeah. carries. Dig in total control all of a sudden. Just broke the ankles of 100 Thieves in what felt like such a dominant early game through the side lanes. It's all falling apart at the hinges. Dignitas, they're gonna take two inhibitors. Quid looking for another big knockup onto Licorice, but just does not have enough backup behind him. They need River to spawn 10 seconds. I think that's the end of the siege from Dignitas, but this game is heavily in their favor from now on. Licorice with the critical 1v1 at the tower. Sniper tried to finish off that split push tower while the rest of the team was doing Baron. And when Dignitas burned down the Baron and get all this extra gold for themselves, using that Baron to take so many towers, the slingshot yeah. has been complete. Sven rewarded. This is the this is one of those games where, you know, usually people like to complain, oh, I won my lane so hard, but the rest oh. of my team, you know, the rest of my mm -hmm. team was just slacking so much. Yep. So it's like, yeah, I won my lane so hard and the rest of the team was slacking, but then we won anyways. And I think most importantly, the two lanes they attacked are the two lanes that helped them the most with this next dragon. So they've killed both mid and bot inhibitors. That helps them get push. They wouldn't have been able to get push with just standard minion lanes because I still think there would be a bit of threat from the Yone Yone and the Camille, but now they have those super minions. They have first set up as this Drake spawns in 10 seconds. Yeah, and they've got the Cassante locket as well for the Karthus ultimate. You have so many answers for a lot of the 100 Thieves tools now because of all the extra gold afforded to Dignitas. They have their Zonias ready for Sven. It's a three item Jensen here on the Corky. And Flash is still up too, so 100 Thieves really don't have a way to engage right now. Instead, they look at Isles, the front line. Now it's Licorice stepping up, trying to buy that space for Jensen to walk forward with confidence. A lot of damage onto Quid. Now the re-engage onto Jensen. He's finally able to flash to safety, and here comes Sven over the top. Gets a kill onto Quid. Sniper's trying to make some action happen. Does get onto Sven eventually, but remember, he has that stasis. He is just fine. Isles will what? go down. That's a fine trade for Dignitas. They still get the dragon. A pretty close fight, all things considered. Second locket being picked up by Dignitas here with Isles as well. Will be some diminishing returns on that one. But I think job generally done for Dig, even if they would have liked a better result out of that fight, because they stopped the Mountain Soul from 100 Thieves. Sven didn't have to burn any critical cooldowns. It was just yeah. Jensen who burned his flash. They got flash from Sniper, Quid, and Ayla before Baron spawning in under a minute. Now let's get another look at it. All right, so they started out on uh, on Isles there, getting a big chunk, and then try and chase them after taking the yeah. dragon. But look at the river too, Camille coming up, and is going to be able to apply the extra pressure as everybody went back for the kid, qui uh, the quid kill there. Yeah, big, big chunk of damage uh, coming through. Dig really did have to move through a bit of an awkward angle there, so I think a little bit fortunate to not 
lose that fight, but I just want to gush about Sven for a second as Baron comes up in 10 seconds, because this guy played support for a couple years and then didn't play professionally for six months. And this is some of the best smolder I have seen in the LCS, especially from stacking an ability to keep his head in a losing game. Here they go. Ooh, Mom over the top, River taking a lot of damage here. This could be a huge pick for Dignitas. They got the jungler. Requiem not gonna go down. I think it's still on cooldown there. So huge pick and they also are just on the Baron regardless. Not to take anything away from Sven and the Smolder, but he He's also- He's perfect! He, he did get to lane against the Scion. Yeah. In the lane swap by himself while the enemy Senna was in mid lane and top lane the entire time. Yeah, so I agree. It was pretty yeah. free stacking yeah. and pretty For sure. <laughs> free farming. Two truths, Kobe. And, two and they, truths. And they also got two really early kills, but he's amazing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Love him and everything. I've I, seen plenty I, of 2-0 <laughs> oh smolders that didn't turn into yeah. this. I just I just say that also, Licorice in a harder position mm -hmm. has done some really amazing work yeah. uh, for the team too. So props to both of them. And now they're looking yeah. for the final turret here, the final inhibitor. Isles is just tanking it up. Finally, the turret will go down. As Dignitas do not lose a member. Sniper's in the sideline. He has teleport. Yeah, this is risky though. It could actually be the game. They're trying to cart salt to hold him off. Yeah, the Requiem comes down. Big damage. One turret's already fallen, and the front line is struggling. Quid stunned up. Ayla's in there. Will get one. Sniper oh. is committing oh. to the split push. He wants to go for the back door. Hopefully, the rest of the thieves can hold the line and stop the backs oh. from oh. coming in. It's He's looking good. Oh, no. So far, Quid's going in. Speak into stasis. Uh, backing happening from Jensen. So the Corky does get back there. Sniper. Oh. He gets one turret. Quid goes down. Down, almost got out of speak up. It's so Another low. ultimate from the sniper. Sniper, sniper. A double kill. Sniper almost takes Jensen, but not quite. Ah. Dignitas hold the line. And in a last ditch effort, the Thieves will go down. Dignitas picking up another game one win. You like the base race, huh? You like that? Guess what? We've got a best of three. This yeah. was only the first game. That is the best news. Dignitas come out with another victory Ooh. in the first game of a series. Yeah. Now the question becomes, in the best of three world here, can they keep it together this time? Can they finish off this series? They're a crafty team, that's for sure, because they were down 5,000 gold in this yeah. one. Sven ended 10 and 0 on Smolder with 450 stacks. Like, yeah, sure, they gave him a free lane, but holy crap, that was dominant. <laughs> yeah. And they, and then even 100 Thieves, they almost clutched it up at the end after losing their lead. That would have been a ridiculous comeback. I really hope we get all three games. I love the fact that Sniper committed, though, to that split push. I think at it's that point, call. the game's not, you're it not going to win the front to back in your base. Just try and go for their Nexus instead. What a game one. I'm so happy we get at least one more. But just another quick reminder, everybody. Week three of the LCS will be taking place next Thursday and Friday. Make sure to tune in as well. Make sure to download the Sleeper app today. Fantasy LCS is happening on Sleeper, and it's not too late to sign up and start your league with your friends and crush their dreams with your own LCS Super Team. You can head over to sleeper.com or sleeper.app to give it a try. Now, let's hear who our pros think will be this summer's Kia MVP. Thursday, Friday. My way too early MVP. Well, Quid stole River's MVP, so I'm gonna save River, he's gonna take it back. I think MVP will be me. Let's just go run it back, Hunter Thieves, Quid again. I gotta go with myself, to be honest. Like, I do think I learned a lot from my split, and that if I take those things and just apply them to my gameplay, I'll become a really good player. I would choose Edward La, my AD carry. I'll give my way too early MVP vote for Impact. Gotta represent the old people too, you know? I think the summer split MVP will be me, or APA, or Young. I think any of the mid laners can get MVP, because mid lane is just broken. Uh, I'm gonna stick with what I said last split, so my way too early vote for MVP for summer is Jojo Pin. Me? <laughs> my, my way too early for MVP. My whatever you just said is uh, is me. I'm gonna vote myself. My way too early MVP vote for this split would be myself. Gonna have some confidence. My way too early MVP vote will be FBI, my partner. My way too early vote for MVP would be Inspired. I would vote myself, but if it wasn't myself, it would probably be B-Boy. Tomio, he's the GOAT. My way too early MVP, I'll give it to Tomio. He's coming in from two NACL wins, so we'll have to get him his 
rightful place as the next uh, LCS winner too. Look what I've just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <sighs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. Make more good in the Kia Sportage X-Pro. Kia, movement that inspires.